Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Moist Style Podcast. So today I really want to tell you my about my experience being part of the uh, coaching staff at the high school level at Westmore High School at the Six A school uh, and winning winning state, which is even even better. So, um, so I kind of want to tell you a couple of the things that I experienced. Um, you know, from the time I got there in the fall all the way until we we got to state and then we won it all. So. The first thing that I that I noticed the first day of practice in the fall, um, you know, I noticed there was a lot of players. <laughs> I didn't realize how many players they're going to have out there. Now, don't quote me on the number. It might have been maybe 50, 55 players, something like that. I'm not even counting the guys that, that were still playing football because they haven't even been back yet. So those are the kids that only play um, uh, baseball in the fall. And so... I thought it was kind of crazy how many um, how many players they they had, but but I love how they had everything structured. So it's not it's not like it was a it was a mess, you know. And so um, so I really liked how they had everything set up. So now when I first got there, uh, obviously a lot of people knew me as the uh, the f- uh, fielding coach, um, and then I, as it went on, I took on different roles. Um, so the first thing that I did was work with infielders and. Obviously, that I, that's you know that's my 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 passion. I, I love working with infielders, and so when I got there, I noticed the different levels of players. Um, so, but and sometimes it could be like real drastic, where you had a guy that was real real good and a kid that maybe could catch the ball, <laughs> and so um, <clears throat> so I thought it was pretty. Um, pretty challenging for me to try to figure out a way to to give them all the same drills but try to not overwhelm the ones that are new and then try to compare them to the same as the ones that are more advanced so I had to come up with ways you know of making it obviously creative for them make it to where they could all be on the same page but obviously at different levels so that right off the bat that, that kind of threw me off because also, in the fall, you don't really have that much time. Um, you're only very limited on how much time, you, how, how long you can practice in the fall. Now, in the spring, it's different because obviously you're getting ready for season, all this stuff. But in the fall, you're kind of limited on that. So um, so now, <clears throat> um, what I really liked, like I said earlier, it's how the, uh, um, the, the coaches or the head coach had everything structured, um, everything to the T. And I, I love that because... I absolutely hate, and I'm sure some of the parents that may be listening to this, I hate when I'm um, when I have practices that are just a circus. I, lo- I love things that are um, set up. You know, um, everything is planned out. We have a plan on what we're gonna do, not just let's go out there and see and see what happens. So I really loved that. Um, I also loved how um, they had a um, uh, strength and conditioning coach, which that guy is awesome. Uh, picked his brain on a lot of lot of stuff. Uh, some of the things that I didn't know about nutrition, about, um, you know, just uh, uh, how to get stronger and all that good stuff. Not necessarily for me, but to help out other players. So that was that was pretty cool. And they worked pretty hard. And uh, I honestly, I, I didn't expect them to work this hard, to be honest, at the high school level. But they worked real hard from the time they get there because obviously we're so limited on time. So we have to make sure we get everything in uh, within that short period of time. Um, so I thought that was pretty pretty neat um now everybody knows you know where uh where they're going because right before they go on the field you know the coach has got everything listed out it's not like hey let's see what we're gonna do today or or uh you know like kind of asking the coaches on the fly what we're gonna work on even though he worked with us he already had a plan set up before 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 practice now one of the cool things that i think i experienced was the um the t- team building activities right so I always thought that, you know, you have to just practice on, on your skills, all that great stuff, you know, you know, everything that has to do with within the game, right? So, like, base running, you know, pitching, situational plays, all that type of stuff. But one thing that I learned big time was that it's not just working on your, your skills, but you also have to work on that team bonding. And so we had a lot of team um, uh, activities or or, or – or, um, or I don't know what you would call it, like challenges or games that they would do outside of just 
like they would do it on the field, but it's not just uh, taking ground balls and hitting balls and all that stuff. So they they had different obstacles. Obviously, at the end of the the um, a certain period of time, like maybe at, at the end of the month or something like that, uh, they would have a punishment. So obviously, they 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 learn how to compete. They learn how to how to work with each other uh, because at first they wanna they wanna they wanna kill each other, but then at the end they have to they realize that they have to work with each other. Uh, to be able to make it happen, uh, we had a. Um, I remember we had a um, uh, one of the one of the uh, the courses that we had was we had a m- machine, a pitching machine, a home plate, and so we we would feed them like three balls at the same time. So that those balls are shooting back to back to back, and they have to really communicate to make sure they don't drop one of them because if they drop one of them, they have to reset and do it all over again. So they really had to work on that communication. It was kind of funny at first, but once they got the hang of it, like it was, it was pretty, uh, pretty cool to see. Uh, they would also like, you know, the stuff that you you kind of see maybe in football, um, where they uh, they have to like kind of uh, flip a tire, but they have to make sure everybody everybody um, takes turns. Um, so they would do all kinds of different activities like that to be able to uh, learn how to how to work together. Which I thought I thought it was genius because sometimes we we spend so much time on uh, practicing with the players, but we forget about our team bond- bonding, and then and then we preach, you know, working as a uh, as a team, but we don't. I guess sometimes we forget to think outside of the box. Um, now, obviously, um, um, we also. By the way, we also had a, a game that well, I, I used to do that with the kids at Tic Tac Toe. Where they have to think fast. Uh, so they had to sprint from home plate and then pick up either the glove or or a ball. And so one would be X, the other one would be O. And so they have to think fast where to put it and then sprint back. So I thought that was pretty cool too. Um, now, um, I like that the uh, the coach, obviously, they they have they have standards set up there. Um, so it wasn't just, you know, having a locker room, having a bunch of players and, you know, relying on talent. He also wanted to teach him. Well, I include myself because obviously, as a coaching staff, we also wanted to teach him, you know, how to handle themselves on and off the field. And it starts really in the locker room uh, because they, he basically had a picture of what the locker room should look like. Um, so, you know, the, the hats need to be placed in a certain place, um, you know, your shirts need to be where they needed to go, you know, your pants, all that type of stuff. Um, so he, Special head coach absolutely hate uh, you know disaster in the in the locker room. So, <clears throat> excuse me. For the most part, the locker room was pretty uh, impeccable. So I, I I love that because you know I, I hate coming into a place where you are having to like pretty much you know having to uh, walk over stuff and um, and that right off the bat sets the tone for the for the players. So um, <clears throat> the other thing that I liked, uh, like I said before, is how they had everything planned out. Uh, to the T uh, for practices and everything. Um, also, they had duties for everybody. Uh, so one had to, you know, vacuum the the, the 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 carpet. The other one had to make sure to throw the trash out. The other ones had to make sure the cages were picked up, not balls were laying around, which I'm not saying that it always happened perfectly like that. But he had standards set up for them. You know, you know, balls were not, you know, hanging off to the side or, or tees all over the place. So, there was always um, something uh, for everybody to do. Uh, obviously, that's part of working as a team and teaching them how to how to prepare themselves and how to, you know, take pride in what they what they have and what they do. So, I, I obviously absolutely love that. Um, and I've already talked about uh, practice organization because I used to think I was like, man, how do you how do you figure out who, who's who, where, where they go? And obviously, our coach there, he he knew where where he needed to go, uh, where everybody needed to go. I'm sorry. Um, so obviously that was pretty helpful. Um, so nobody was, you know, confused or lost or anything like that. Uh, he would also put, you know, what what shirt we're wearing for that day, all that type of stuff. Um, now, uh, in the fall, we did a lot more defense. Um, so I'm not saying we didn't hit at all, but we did a lot more defense uh, than anything else because obviously we could be outside more. Uh, because you know when it gets when it starts to get cold, it gets pretty pretty tough. Even though we have turf field, it still gets pretty tough. And and um, at a certain temperature, they don't they don't let you go out there to practice. So you have to be indoors. 
Um, so we did a lot of um, defensive stuff in the fall. Um, you know, we went over different situational plays. Um, you know, obviously, you know, uh, fielding skills. Um, you know, outfielders, infielders, um, all that type of stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else we did when it come, when it came to defense. I'm sure I'll think of it here in a second. But uh, now, when it came to uh, uh, especially uh, January, uh, we started a little bit in December, but in January is when we started hitting hard, um, the hitting part offense, right? So that's when we started hitting more. Uh, obviously, we're getting ready for season because it starts. Don't quote me on this. I'm drawing a blank on when the scrimmages start, but I think it's sometime in February. Um, and so we would start, we would, we would get going with hitting. Uh, obviously, pitchers would start throwing bullpens, all that great stuff. And so we, as we went on, okay, so like I've, that's one of the things that I learned when it came to hitting, that you can't just stick with the same thing, especially if it's not working. So we had to come up with different drills. Uh, so we kind of, it's kind of tra trial and error. Because not it doesn't have to be because a lot I think a lot of times people coaches think that just because you believe that doesn't mean that it's gonna work that way. So sometimes you have to kind of um, improvise and kind of see what fits best for the for the team. So I'm not saying that we had it down to the team perfectly, but we found stuff drills that will work best for them. So to work on off speed, to work on fastballs, to work on driving the ball the other way. Um, to work and being uh, being more selective of the play, all that type of stuff. Um, so we have different di different drills for that. Um, <clears throat> now, we uh, when we knew uh, uh, when we knew we were gonna face uh, a fast pitcher, uh, especially a kid because at the high school level, obviously upper 80s, low 90s. That's that's pretty hard. Um, I'm not saying it's not hard anywhere else, but. You know, at the high school level, you don't get to see kids that are throwing 90 uh, every single day. And so when you play normally, everybody knows, right? When you play your district games, more than likely you're going to see the number one, the number two. Um, so a lot of those kids are up there. They're throwing upper 80s, low 90s. So when we knew that we were going to face, you know, those guys like that, uh, especially as we went to regionals and all that type of stuff, uh, state, we almost like over prepare them because – we had to figure out a way to make it um, towards about the same speed that they're going to see because you go from a kid that's throwing, you know, low to mid-70s, maybe low 80s, and all of a sudden you face a guy that's throwing, you know, uh, upper 80s, low 90s, maybe mid-90s. So the big, big jump. So obviously you have to uh, prepare them for that. So we would do, you know um, – which, by the way, my arm was hanging after <laughs> after doing this, but we would do short distance BP. Uh, we would do obviously machine. Uh, we would do um, different type of um, 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 setups so that we could challenge them. We wanted to pretty much over prepare them so when they go when they we go see those guys, they weren't so overwhelmed because we couldn't sit out there and just say, hey, yeah, go ahead and hit this guy that's absolutely bringing it with pretty good off speed. And uh, we didn't even get you ready for it. So we had to take turns as coaches. You know, some will, will throw one day, some will throw the next, uh, uh, some will throw on the field. Um, so we had to take turns because obviously our arms are going to fall off. <laughs> but we wanted to make sure they were they were ready for it. Um, but in the fall, going back and on, going back and forth here, but in the fall we did challenge them quite a bit, uh, especially defensively. So we wanted to make sure – practices were a lot harder in the game and I'm sure you heard that before but we wanted to make sure we did that because we wanted to make sure we challenge them because we would play, put players that are obviously very talented with the ones that are not as talented so they have to figure out a way to to uh to fight through and work as a team together and challenge themselves and to me I think it was pretty helpful in the season because uh one thing especially our head coach co uh, coach Hanika would talk about is that you know our players would never panic, and I can I can agree with that because those guys you know we could we would be down by six seven runs and somehow we would <laughs> find a way to come back not always but but I don't know we just had guys that they just they weren't scared to uh, to fight back so that was that was pretty cool to see um, and all the um, all the goals that 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 we set up for them um, obviously you know it's 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 kind of hard 
because we always talk about these goals, all this great stuff at the beginning of the season, but but then when you're in the middle of it, sometimes you forget the stuff that that um, that we went over before and how to trust that that whole process there. Um, now, when we uh, uh, when we went to regionals, it was kind of uh, it was kind of crazy because I think um, we start off doing okay, and then we kind of mid season we kind of went a little. We had a little uh, roller coaster, so we would be up and down, and so um, it was a little crazy. But we went and faced um, we faced a team. Um, I forget the the, the school um, school's name. We played in game one, and so we were facing a guy that he must have been throwing maybe seventies, <laughs> maybe upper sixties sometimes. And then the second game we played against um, um, Edmond North, and we faced the guy that. Uh, Vanderbilt commit so he was a senior and I'm pretty sure he was throwing uh, either mid to uh, excuse me low to mid 90s um, and there's a guy that obviously he's got a pretty good chance to get drafted this year and all that great stuff but it's pretty crazy how <laughs> we had to go face a guy that's throwing you know upper 60s maybe low 70s now we got to go see a guy that's throwing mid 90s so that was pretty uh, that was pretty tough one of our coaches uh, coach uh, uh, Gutierrez, he was actually after the game was over, the first game we, he took him out there and literally threw <laughs> balls like a real short distance, not for them to swing, but for them to be able to track. Um, you know, you just kind of get used to the speed a little bit because it's a, obviously a big, um, big change. We didn't do as well uh, that game, so that was our first loss in the regionals and uh, in six A. I'm not sure how it is with the other levels, but. Uh, I know in 6A, you, you go regional, so you double elimination. Then once you go state, it's single elimination. So obviously, if we lost another one, we were we were done. But um, I don't think our hitting was really our our struggle that, that game. I think it was more of our defense. Um, and so normally, teams will take in and out. Um, they would, um, you know, in and out for ones that don't know, uh, you they're your pregame stuff, basically. So they, they take outfield, they throw the bases, and then you bring the infield in, they throw the bases, and then that's it. You wrap it up there. But when we got to the fielding part, uh, that that day they, they, they didn't do the greatest defensively. Obviously, me as a defensive guy, I take a lot of pride in that, and I was pretty aggravated. And I wanted to make sure these guys actually made plays because I, I said I don't. the last thing I want is for us to lose the game defensively. And so, especially when we're facing a guy like that. So the next day, and the reason why, I keep going back and forth, but the reason why is because we play a lot on turf. And so they're so used to playing on turf uh, turf field that when they went back to play on dirt field, it was a big difference because obviously you don't get the same hops as you do on turf. And so we literally spent like five, six, the last, the last five, six minutes just hitting them ground balls uh, one after another, just over and over and over, giving them a bunch of different crazy hops, um, which obviously can – it's the big difference when you go from turf to dirt field because you're not going to get the same hops you do um, uh, on turf. So so we hit them a bunch of ground balls. We just wanted to make sure they were ready for that game, and uh, we wanted to make sure we didn't lose that game uh, because we didn't do well on our defense, so we wanted to prepare them. And then we went on to the next game, and then we won. And then we faced their number two, uh, uh, Edmund North, uh, probably throwing, I would guess, uh, probably upper 80s, pretty good pitcher. Um, and then we, we, um, I think I can't remember what, what, what the score was. We beat them, so we won regionals, and now we're going to state, right? So, one thing that I remember the coaches would would, would tell me, uh, because you know it sounds kind of funny, but it, they would always tell me it's all about who gets hot at the right time. And it's so true. As obvious as that may sound like, it's so true because we had some players on our team that struggle um, offensively um, just pretty much throughout the whole year. Some throughout the whole year, some are up to the midpoint of the, the season. And then they just literally came clutch at the right time. They just got hot at the right time. They, I don't know what happened, but they just locked in and uh, made it happen. And one thing that I got from them is that obviously we all know that saying that it's not about how you start, it's how you finish. But I love that these kids, the ones that struggle all year, uh, the couple of the players that struggle, they never quit working. 
And so they would always, obviously you can see the frustration in their face sometimes because, you know, they don't, they don't want to let the team down. They want to produce for the team, all that great stuff, but they just, they just hit a huge slump and they just didn't seem to get, be able to get out of it, but they stuck with their routine. They stuck with putting in the work. Um, and then eventually it just, it just paid off at the right time. And, uh, and now these guys, obviously they look like heroes because, you know, they never quit. And that's one thing that I would honestly advise to the younger ones or, or the players and excuse me, or the parents or the coaches just don't quit so early, especially at a young age. You know, people are like, well, my kids just, just can't hit, can't do this, can't do that. But yeah. But, but you got to give them time. If you stick with it, I'm telling you, it's going to pay off at the end. Or at least you're going to see a lot better results than what you, what you start off with. So I thought that was pretty, uh, pretty cool to see. And then when we got to the to the championship, um, you know, we were down by three. They hit a, a, th um, a three run home run, uh, and break down in um, Oklahoma City, and um, so I think we were down up to the until the s I'm drawing a blank now until the fifth inning, and then we just came back. We got on fire again. We got on a roll, and we just uh, they hit a, a fly ball to center field. Uh, one of our center fielder uh, um, just like camp caught it and then it was just it was unreal you know obviously everybody went and celebrated and all that stuff and I thought I, I thought it was pretty cool because you know obviously I've never coached at the high school level and to, to get the opportunity to get to to be on a, a great coaching staff and then win it all that first year not everybody gets that opportunity so obviously I'm pretty blessed to get that type of opportunity and it was pretty fun because I was I was around coaches that they were baseball coaches, um, and they they knew the game, and uh, some of them were young, um, but it was pretty pretty cool to see. But um, I think what one thing that I took away from this is that, um, like I said before, it's not so much how you start as how you finish, right? But the kids that struggle at the beginning, they trusted the whole process, right? They knew it's. <laughs> Even if they didn't want to believe it, baseball is it's just it's, it's, it's a game of failure, right? So I've always said that this game is made for pitchers to succeed more than the hitters, right? So that's why the big league level, you know, they if they hit three out of ten, the 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 they're a hall of famer, right? And so they have to understand that. But but I, th I really admire the kids that really stuck with it, and they always put in the work day in day out, and they never quit. And then the last thing that I got from it is that as a coach, you have to really, it takes time for your players to trust you, okay? And sometimes they, they, they already know about you, so they trust you right away. But a lot of them didn't know who I was, right? So they would, I'm talking about me specifically, right? So I, I knew at the beginning, some of those players, they didn't trust me. They didn't think I, maybe they're like, man, does he know what he's talking about? Does, does he not know? So... It takes time because I think sometimes as a coach, we want to just kind of shove everything in, the, in their head and then we want to do it our way. And then if they don't like it, too bad, right? Which I get it. You know, everybody's got a different uh, coaching style. But for me, I had to figure out ways to uh, to uh, for them to trust me and, 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 and let them know that I knew what I was talking about. And then obviously to be able to trust the process. So you have to be patient when the players are not really – kind of following what you're saying but eventually if you really stick with them if you find out who they are not only on the field but off the field too because you know they're not just you know they don't live live on the field they have a family outside of the field if you start to learn them you'll start to actually uh, earn their trust and it goes it goes a long ways so uh that's all i got for you guys today uh today and this uh episode Hopefully it wasn't too boring. I just think it was a pretty cool experience. And uh, till next episode, keep it moist out. Hey, guys, it's an appreciation for hanging out with me this long. I want to give you 10% off for any of my two online infield courses. So you have the Master of Art Fielding course. Uh, you can get 10% off that for either the monthly or the, or the yearly. And you can also get 10% off if you, if you purchase the mini course, which is uh, the master in field and timing. Um, when you go over here to, um, uh, to, uh, uh, my full course, uh, you're going to have access to over 250, uh, lessons that you can choose from. 
Uh, just make sure you type in Moy Podcast 10 to get 10% off. And if you follow step-by-step step how I have it set up in this program, I guarantee you, you're going to see results.